Karanda Sadair. She is a WordPress developer turned digital marketer for service-based business owners. She uses WordPress to help business owners save time and money by turning their website into a, their best sales tool. She cares more about your success than whether you like her and often makes her clients uncomfortable. One of her life's goals is to answer every question with a link to her blog, on her blog. All right. Cool. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thanks for coming. Uh, like she said, my name is Karanda Adair. I'm the CEO of Carvel Digital, which is a digital marketing agency. And so I help primarily service-based business owners um, to create marketing systems for their business so we can smooth out that whole feast and famine thing that happens. And um, so I'm going to talk to you today about time saving. And um, so first, why are there puppies on my intro slide? Um, one of the catalysts for this talk is that my wife and I have been planning a two-year, it's been a two-year process to getting a puppy. And I knew that when the puppy came, I wasn't going to have a lot of time. And puppies are expensive, so I needed to make more money. So, um, and because puppies generally make people feel good. So, um, so this was in mid-August of this year when we went to go visit the litter and they were four weeks old, which if you've never been in a puppy pile, I highly recommend it. Um, and the, the one that ended up being ours is the little guy that is on my... Um, okay, so let's talk about the agenda. Um, I'm going to talk about the number one thing that you need for anything that I'm about to tell you to even work. I'm going to talk about the field of play, which is your calendar. I'm going to give you some tips and some actions that you can take to try to save, save time in your business. And then I'm going to give you some tools that will help you save time. And then I'm going to give you the opportunity to design your own action plan. Does that sound good? Yep. Cool. All right, so the number one thing that's going to determine whether you even get anything out of this, does anybody have a guess? Our attitude. Your attitude, bingo, your mindset, right? Human beings always have to feel and perform in accordance to what we believe to be true about ourselves and our environment. So a good example of that is, let's say you're walking in the woods, and you see something, and you hear something, and you see it out of the corner of your eye, and it's a bear. What's going to happen? Your heart rate's going to go up. You're probably going to run, which is probably what you shouldn't do. <laughs> but all that stuff, and then later on you find out it was just a person in a bear suit. Does that matter? <laughs> when you think it's a bear, right? So what you believe is paramount to what you can achieve. And, um, so we all have the same amount of time as, as these three ladies. Um, does anybody know who the one in the middle is? Shonda Rhimes. Does any of people know who Shonda Rhimes is? If you've ever watched television on a Thursday night in the last eight or nine years, she's responsible for Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, um, those, those shows. Scandal. Scandal. Yes, can't forget Scandal. But we all have the same amount of time as these three ladies. And so if there's someone that you kind of look up to who's more successful and you think, oh, I can never do that, the reality is that they probably just know something that you don't know or they believe something better than what you believe, or they're doing something that you're not doing, and those are all things that we can actually control. So some tips, or some tools to work on your mindset. These are two great books that are gonna help you if you haven't really thought about systems or um, become aware of, of systems thinking in, in relation to your business. These are two great books that I recommend. The first one is Work the System by Sam Carpenter. You can actually download the entire book for free if you just go to workthesystem.com and opt in. And the second book is called Run Like, uh, it's called Clockwork, and it's Design Your Business to Run Itself, and it's by Mike McCallowitz, who also wrote several other great books, but Profit First is one of my favorite ones. And um, I'm actually halfway through Clockwork, and it's brilliant, um, like his other stuff, and will really give you a leg up on thinking differently about your business, even if you're a business of one. Okay, the field of play. We're talking about time, so the field of play is your calendar. And so what I want to do is actually invite you right now to take out your calendar, whether that's a planner, a phone, your laptop, whatever. I want you to take out your calendar, and I want you to block off four hours in the next two weeks to implement something that you learned here today. 
and that could be a one four hour block, it could be four one hour blocks, whatever works for you. So I'm going to pause actually um, and give you all a chance to do that. What's that? You can call your secretary. <laughs> Give me the high sign if you're done. Mm -hmm. 30 more seconds. <coughs> All right. Oh, the other thing I'm going to say about this actually before we move on is that when you're taking in new information, because as a society, we're kind of prone to information overload, and there's just there's so much to learn about so many things. So my suggestion to you is to implement something called just-in-time learning, where you really only take in information that you need to do something in the very near future, and that when you're about to take in that information, that you do this, that you that you understand in order to implement and get the benefit of what you learn, you're going to have to block out some time. So if you just get in the habit of doing that, that's going to greatly enhance your effectiveness. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some tips. And my first tip, especially for service-based business owners, which I have a special love for because I am one, is, oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Um, here's another tool for you. Um, auditing your time and understanding where your time is going right now is actually paramount to being able to improve whatever your situation is. So if you have a way to do that, if you have a time tracking system already, that's great. If you don't, you can go to carvel.me slash time dash audit. And I just give you a spreadsheet starter that you can do. And what I want you to do is track your time for at least a week. And when I do this, I literally just, I have a Google sheet. I have it accessible in my phone. And every 15 minutes or 30 minutes max, I pull it up and say, okay, what have I been doing for the last 15 or 30 minutes? And start to understand where are you spending your time? Are you spending it uh, on Twitter? Are you spending it, you know, cleaning? Because that's your form of procrastination. And if that is your form of procrastination, let's talk. Um, <laughs> um, you know, understand where your time is going right now. All right, tip number one, stop having so many coffee dates. This is, this is especially if you are in any kind of service space industry where, you know, making money is directly tied to spending your time. You know, people at a certain point, especially if you start to get successful, people want to know, like, how do you do what you do? Or how can I do what you do? And, oh, can we have, can I buy you coffee? And can I pick your brain? Which is gross, by the way, stop saying that. Um, <laughs> the people who do this are most likely never going to become your clients. And they're most likely not going to act on the advice you give them because it's free and people don't value what they don't pay for. So you probably don't need to be having so many coffee dates. Um, you should really spend 80% of, of your time on having conversations with qualified prospects and delighting their clients. Like if you're in the first, say, five years of your business or if you're not making as much money as you want to make, then that's where you should focus your time. Uh, tip number three, stay laser focused on your why. Why is that important? In your business, you probably got started in your business because either you're making something or you're good at something that people are willing to pay you for. And then at some point, the reality sinks in that there's all these other aspects to running your business that either you're not good at or you don't enjoy or both. But they have to be done. You can't not do bookkeeping and accounting. You can't not do marketing. You can't, whatever it is that's not your thing, it still has to be done if you're going to run a business. And so if you stay focused on why it is you're doing it, it can motivate you to push through and actually do those things. So some of the things I'm going to tell you today are considered unsexy and not that fun by most people. I tend to like most of them because I'm a nerd um, for some of this stuff. But understanding why you're doing it will, will help you push past the, that 
resistance. Tip number four is to theme your days and chunk your tasks together. Um, this is a concept that I learned from a guy named Todd Herman, who is a brilliant um, businessman and sports coach. Um, he spent 20 years um, coaching high-performance athletes, Olympic and professional athletes, and he's taken those principles that he uses with his athletes and translated it to business. So I learned this from him, and when I heard it, I was like, well, of course, of course, why would you do this? So this is like an example, marketing Mondays, or client work on Tuesdays, or meetings on Wednesdays, um, relationships on, you know, building on Thursdays. What does that do for you? Well, it reduces your overload for making decisions, right? You don't have to get up on Monday morning and be like, oh, what am I going to do? And you're like, oh, I'm going to work on marketing tasks today. And I'm sure you plan those in <coughs> um, So like if someone says to me, if someone does ask me for a coffee date, I don't think about it anymore. Like, I think about whether I want to say yes or no. But if the answer is yes, then I just say, oh, yeah. And I send them to a calendar that just has Thursdays. Just has dates on Thursdays, because that's my relationship building day. And I don't have to have that you know, decision fatigue from thinking about that. All right, um, now we're getting into actions. So this is one of those <laughs> things that some of you might dread or not want to do or not find fun. And it, it's not really that fun, but organizing your files is super important. Why, why do you think that's important? So you can find them later. So you can find them later. If you're trying to do a thing and you spend 10 minutes trying to find the image that you need for the social media post to do whatever, like, that's time wasted. Yeah, and that those things add up really quickly. And so, you know, at some point I just took three solid weeks where I spent a chunk of each day just wrangling my files. I had just been throwing things, you know, on the desktop, and then when I had to present and my desktop was messy, I'd make a folder and call it, like, the date or something. Like, it was bad. Um, so I spent that time, and I made my Dropbox just, like, pristine. But now when I, when I need to get my hands on something, I know exactly where it is because there's organization. Um, and somebody asked me, actually, the last time I presented this talk, like, well, how do you organize your, organize your files? So if you go to carveldigital.com slash files, there's actually a video, and I show in the video exactly how I organize my files. Okay, documenting your processes. This is another thing, especially new-ish business owners do not think about. And they'll say things like, well, it's just me. Yes, but it's not really just you, it's past you and present you future you. And documentation is a love letter to future you because you're going to go back to a thing that you don't do very often and you'll be like, how did I do that thing? And you will have written yourself a love letter that says, hey, here's a checklist of how you do this thing. And you'll get it done much faster. And actually, about 40 minutes ago, when I was getting ready for this talk, I realized I do all these little things to get ready for a talk, like turn off my notifications so you don't have to see all my texts from my wife coming in while I'm giving this talk. And I was like, oh, I don't have a process for that. So um, the tool that I use for this is Process Street. There's others out there. But I spun up a day process that I have a template for, and I wrote down all the things that I do to get ready for a talk, like turn off flux so you don't, don't have to look at a yellow screen. <laughs> um, so checklists are awesome. Um, OK, so let's talk about tools. Your website, obviously we're all here, it's, Word, it's WordCamp. Um, you probably, most of you have websites. That is a tool that you can actually use to, to save time. And so an example that I give for that is, this is um, one of my clients, and what they do is they shuttle people to the end of this trail in Northern California, it's about a 24 mile long trail. They shuttle people to the end of it so they can hike back to their car and they don't have to do this double shuttle thing. And how they previously operated is just all by phone and email. So you would call them up and say, okay, I'm coming on this day. And they'd say, great, and you show up and you pay cash. Or maybe you didn't show up and they would lose that money. Um, and their previous website, in my humble opinion, didn't really look like it would inspire the trust to get into a van with someone who's going to take you somewhere where there's no cell service. <laughs> so they were spending a lot of time answering the same questions over and over again by following my email. 
And so we created a new site for them, and um, we gave them some branding, right, up the trust factor. Uh, we gave them online booking, which was huge. People cannot just go on the website, um, but they can actually just book right there, um, and that greatly improves their cash flow. Uh, we gave them a huge FAQ, frequently asked questions, because when you hike this trail, it's, it's um, on the coast of California, and parts of that trail are underwater twice a day from the tides. So you're like, you can literally get swept out to sea. So there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. So we gave them a huge FAQ that answers a lot of those questions of like, what do you have to do before you do this hike? And you, know, you need to get a permit and all of those kinds of things. And so one of the things that owner said to me about two weeks after we launched, is my phone has virtually stopped ringing, which was great because they were getting more bookings than ever before, but he wasn't spending that time. Um, content is a really, really useful tool in time saving. So you heard her say in the introduction that one of my goals in life is for um, the answer to almost every question that someone asks me to be a link to my <laughs> blog. Because people ask me the same questions over and over again. And so this is a screenshot from the previous version of my website where uh, I did a 30-day challenge where I posted a video every day. I recorded and uploaded and posted a blog with a video every day for 30 days. And I did that like I do most things out of frustration because a lot of people were telling me, well, I don't have time to create content. It's too hard. And I was like, really? Really? It's too hard? Okay, let's see. And I'm not gonna lie, it was hard. Like life was happening. <laughs> life was happening while I was doing this challenge. Um, I was actually still finishing the production of an online course that I was creating. Um, we went to Santa Fe to visit my father-in-law for like five days, <coughs> and I would like, leave them, and I would go walk around and make my video and post it. Um, but the point is like priorities, right? So if you understand the value of content, then you make it a priority and you get it done because it's, gonna, it's an asset that you can then have in your business and build on. Um, here are some of the benefits of content. It will establish you as an authority in your niche. We literally say that someone wrote the book on something to mean like they're an expert and they know what they're talking about. So publishing gives you that authority. You can save time by answering frequently asked questions, like I talked about before. It will save you from selling. Does anybody here hate sales? Like feel kind of about selling? Yeah, that's, that's super common. So if you have content, you can let your content do the selling for you. And at this point, I literally have people come to me you know, to talk about working together, and they'll say things like, I feel like I already know you because I've been watching your videos for the last two hours. Right? I don't have to sell them. They know what I'm about because I've been publishing for the last six years. And really, we just have to establish what is the problem and can I help them with it. Does that sound like an easier way to do it? All right. Um, it can allow you to filter your leads. So this is another important thing. You really want to only talk to qualified prospects who could actually do business with you. So if they don't have any money or if they're not the right fit for your business, you don't want to waste your time with those people. And so everybody who wants to get on my calendar actually has to fill out an application first. And it just tells me a little bit about their business and what they're trying to achieve so that I know, like, is it really worth spending, you know, 45 minutes? Or is there some clear indicator they're like, well, I can't really even help them, so why waste the time? So that's something you can implement. And one of the other presenters talked about attorneys' websites, um, you know, and everybody knows attorneys, like, they bill by the minute, and they're very expensive, and so uh, I, I pitched this concept to an attorney one time, and the guy's kind of lit up. Um, okay, so other tools. Um, actually, making a website is very, very challenging for a lot of people. So I have a whole suite of tools, which um, I'll show you how to get access to, for how I actually create websites quickly. So one of them is Beaver Builder. And I don't know if Robbie's in this room, but Robbie from Beaver Builder is here, and they're awesome. And it's a great like rocket fuel in terms of getting your website up quickly. So they have a theme, and they have a themer, which means not just build you know pages with drag and drop functionality, but you can actually build sections of your theme with 
that drag and, fun, drag and drop functionality, and you can use those sections over and over, like the header and the footer and things like that. Um, ThriveThemes.com, they make WordPress themes and conversion-focused WordPress plugins. What does that mean, conversion-focused? It means it's tools that make it easier to collect leads on your website, get people to opt in for your email list, for instance. Tools that make it easy for you to A-B test different things. So by that I mean, let's say you want to test a landing page and 1% of people are converting in that landing page. And so you decide you want to change the headline or the image and see if that works better. You can literally spin up a copy of that page and then send half the traffic to the first page and half the traffic to the second page and see which one works better. And using one of their tools, you can say, hey, I want to run this test for two weeks, or I want this many people to see this, and then I want you to keep the winner automatically. And you can do that whole process in 30 to 60 minutes. So what if you devoted an hour a week to constantly testing your landing pages to constantly improve your conversion rate? So really powerful tools. Highly recommend you check them out. Um, a CRM, or Customer Relationship Manager, is just a tool where you can collect all your leads together and you can collect all the information that you have about those leads. Um, and so ActiveCampaign is the tool that I love for that, and it's also an email, um, an email service provider, so you can do your CRM and send your subscriber emails with the same thing. <coughs> Password Management. You don't have to raise your hands, but I just know for a fact from having talked to many people that some of you in this room are using sticky notes to manage your passwords. You're using Excel spreadsheets to manage your passwords. The same password. You're using the same password everywhere to manage your passwords. That's very expensive and it's putting you at great risk. So the way to actually have secure passwords and to have diverse, you know, use a different password for everything is to use a password manager. And for that, I like one password. Um, there's others out there. There's a tweet that I don't think I have a screenshot of that where I said I was going to have one password, maybe. I've been using them for a, for a long time. Uh, okay, online calendars. Raise your hand if you've done the thing where you're like, hey, let's meet. Do you, are you free at this time? No? Okay, what about, raise your hand if you've done that, that email dance. Yeah, a lot of hands. Okay, we don't have to do that anymore. That problem is solved. You can get an online calendar, like Calendly or Schedule Once, and you can put your availability in there, and you can sync it with your calendar, maybe your Outlook or your Google Calendar, and so then you can send people a link, and it will just show them your available times. And then they can look at their available times, and they can pick the one that works for them. Done. Getting things signed. Um, I didn't have this one in there, but um, I did a partnership with a major um, travel-related tourist organization, and when it came to signing the contract, I sent them off my signed version, and they sent me back a, a photo of the paper signed version. So I so then I put this in here. Um, so if you need to get things signed, like contracts, proposals, agreements, um, there's digital tools for that where you can just send the agreement, send a PDF, have someone click a button to fill in their signature, and um, it's a perfectly valid legal sig signature. So hello sign is a great one for that, and you can use it for free for up to three signatures a month. Yes? So for something like that, they don't have to subscribe or do anything from me? They just no, click and sign. They just click and sign. All right, um, show, don't tell. So has anybody here like trying to work with maybe a designer or a developer or a client and you keep trying to email them and explain what you mean and they just don't get it, right? You're just missing each other. So it's super useful to be able to show somebody what you mean. And so um, tools that will allow you to just quickly record your screen and you know click through and show people how to do things or you know, where they should look for a certain thing can save you a huge amount of time. So uh, the one I use is called Cloud App, and I believe it's actually owned by Automatic now. Um, and then there's another one called Loom, which is free. So great tool. Um, and I use it a lot with my, um, with my team, and I 
use it in a ton with my clients where I'm just like, go here and do this exact thing. And then they can go and do it. And it's awesome. All right. So I've talked about a lot of different tools and a lot of apps and a lot of services. And your website doesn't live in a vacuum. And so it's very, very useful if you can connect all these things together. So there are tools that help you do that, where you don't have to learn to code in order to do that. You can connect your website, for instance, to ActiveCampaign. Um, and so some of those tools are Zapier, or Zapier, I never know which to call it. Has anyone heard of that one? Yeah, half the room, awesome. Um, so there's literally like a thousand services on there, and you can go and you say, well, I want to collect, connect ActiveCampaign to WordPress or I want to connect, you know, Gravity Forms to something else. Whatever it is, awesome, awesome tool. Um, and then if you, have, if you have a business where you have leads, you know, you have, you know, maybe your CRM and you're using different services to kind of track your leads, maybe you have users in your website and you have people in active campaign and some of them are clients and some of them are not, and you need to sync all this contact information, then PySync is a great tool for that. It's specifically to help you sync your contact information between different things. Like maybe your CRM or maybe somebody actually becomes a client and then you need to put their contact stuff into your project management tool. So you can sync all that with PySync. Um, and one thing I like to mention too is that a lot of these things are subscriptions which can start to add up. And so one thing you can do to mitigate that is to um, go to appsumo.com, A-P-P-S-U-M-O.com, and they basically curate deals for lifetime subscriptions to services like these. So if you know in particular that you're looking for something, you can kind of keep an eye out and you can get lifetime deals and, and kind of cut down on those um, ongoing subscription costs. But um, so I've told you that, but also be very careful if you're prone to shiny object syndrome. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever gone to AppSumo and not bought something. <laughs> so I don't go there very often. Um, automating repetitive tasks. This is like a huge one. If, you're, if you can evaluate the things that you have to do over and over again, and the big one that comes up is social media and posting on social media. Um, so if you think about things that you do over and over again, there's often ways that you can automate. And Jocelyn, you haven't had your talk yet, right? It's tomorrow. Okay, so you go to Jocelyn's talk and she's going to talk completely about automation. Um, but one of the things that I use and love for this is CoSchedule, and it's a content planning social media um, calendar that helps you collaborate with your team and helps you schedule social media in advance. Um, and it helps you actually reuse that content and put it on a loop. So if you follow me on Twitter, um, a lot of those things that are tweeting out like old blog posts to kind of keep that content in front of people comes from CoSchedule. Uh, text expanders. Now we're getting into some more personal, a little bit uh, nerdy, but text expander is a tool that will allow you to type a very short shortcut and expand it into some longer text. So a few things that it's great for is if you're constantly misspelling a word, like maintenance, not saying that's the one I misspell, but uh, you know, if there's things that you commonly misspell, then you can put the misspelling into Text Expander, and then it will just fix it for you. Um, if there are long URLs that you go to a lot, I have a whole folder in my Text Expander that's just URLs that I send out all the time. And I have just little shortcuts. People are like, how do you come up with these links so fast? Well, this is how. Um, haven't typed out my address my whole address in many years, um, things like that. So little little things that add up. Um, so the one I use is actually called Text Expander, but I recently found this one called Atext, and it's a lot cheaper. Um, it's like five bucks versus a um, having to upgrade every year, or upgrade when they come out with a new version, and it does pretty much the same thing. Okay, so things that you can do with automation. Um, onboarding. Love, love, love automation for onboarding. What does that look like? Uh, back when I was more focused on websites, making websites for people, I had a website project in inquiry form. And so you'd come to my website and you would fill out a form, tell me all about your project and what you were trying to achieve and all that jazz. And when you hit submit, a couple of things would happen. 
one, all the information that you just shared with me would go straight to active campaign. So that then I have that record. So then if you have a team that needs to follow up with that person, they have all that information too. The other thing that would happen is that person would get tagged and that would um, set off a reply to them saying, hey, thanks for filling out this project inquiry form. Here's what's going to happen next. So what does that do? It makes people feel like, oh, okay, because it was kind of a big form. It took some time. So it tells them like, hey, we got your thing. We appreciate your thing. And we know you're like, what, what now? <laughs> right? So you tell them what's going to happen next. Um, and I would also attach like a little one sheet that told them kind of the range of investment for the things I do, because that's the other number one question that people have. So then it doesn't matter what I'm doing, if I'm walking the puppy, if I'm dealing with another client, if I'm asleep, I know that people are going to get that response immediately. So I love it for onboarding. You can also use it for onboarding employees, contractors, clients, etc. Um, repetitive tasks, like I talked about. So. Imagine if you had to have an employee like manually do that, you know, hey, another inquiry came in, um, go and send out the, you know, the reply. Well, it slows things down and that person can spend their time doing other things. Um, and then late qualifying, which I talked a little bit about, um, and that's just, I, you know, now I have an application form. If someone wants to work together, I say, okay, great, you know, go and schedule get on the calendar, and then go and fill out the application, and um, they automatically go through that process. I don't have to go and like send them the next step. So automation is awesome, and you should totally go to Jocelyn's talk tomorrow. All right, so just to recap, the first thing is to understand and adopt a systems mindset. Everything that you do in your business and in life, frankly, is a system. You get up, you get dressed, you brush your teeth in the morning. Like that's all systems. And there are systems happening in your business. And if you stop and think about them and expose them, that's when you can start to document them and then make those more efficient. Track your time because what gets measured gets managed. Um, so you have to know where your baseline is. Um, you want to focus on the right things. A lot of times we're we're, we're really busy. And we're like, I don't have time to do all the things. And like 50, 60, 70% of the things you're doing aren't really the things that are super important to move your business forward. So what you spend your time on is just as important. Um, keep your goal in mind. Keep your why in mind, why you're doing this. Make sure you're constantly like going towards your North Star. Um, and then if it's important, schedule it. It has to go on your calendar or it's not going to go get done. All right, so now it's your turn. Um, I'm curious what of the things that I've shared here today, what are you going to implement and when are you going to do it? Anybody want to share? Yes. I'm putting text expanders in spreadsheet right now. You're putting text expanders in a spreadsheet. Awesome, awesome. Who mm -hmm. else? I don't really know, but I have four hours set aside to do it. <laughs> okay, you don't know, but you've got four hours, so you can decide. Awesome. Anybody else? One more? Yeah. So I'm going to find the organizer. I'll have to four hours on Tuesday. Yes, four hours on Tuesday to organize your files. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Um, if you like the tools section, you can go to carveldigital.com slash tools. And you can get the, um, the mini course that I have that talks a little bit more in depth about all the tools that I've shared with you today. Um, this is the puppy as of yesterday. <laughs> um, these are our kitties. These are my why. Thanks for coming. And uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you.
things that maybe you're not good at or they take you a long time that other people can do. And so starting to categorize those tasks and when you're tracking like what you're spending your time on, start thinking about, well, do I have to be the person who schedules the social media posts? Probably not. You might have to be the person who writes the blog post and someone else could go through that and pick out the snippets and create the social media posts. Someone else could, in fact, if you saw tweets like in the last 24 to 48 hours about WordCamp, that was Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so outsourcing is a huge tool that you can use to really supercharge your business because it gives you back your time to spend on that, that 80%. And if you read Clockwork, he talks about the QBR, the Queen Bee role, and then he has an exercise to help you determine like what is actually the, the number one thing without which like your business would just die, right? And that is the thing that you have to protect. And when most people figure that out, and then they figure out what they're spending our time on, like 80% of your time should be spent on that and both the queen bee role. And most people are spending maybe like 20% of their time on that. And so doing that exercise and understanding like this is the thing that has to be protected at all costs and everything else can, can get, you know, filtered off to, to other people. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes? You said you use the Uber uh, why do I like Beaver Builder? Um, okay, so I started as a developer. I went to school and I got a degree in interactive um, web design and development. And so I started out just making websites for a long time. <clears throat> and as I got more, so what happened is I would make websites, I would hand them off to people. They wouldn't do anything with them because they were hard to edit or they weren't technical or what have you. Um, they wouldn't keep them updated, so they'd get hacked. Um, and so I got more interested in marketing. And marketing is about communication, and in order to be able to communicate with your website, you have to be able to change things easily. So one of my primary um, missions is to make it easy for the business owner to actually update their website themselves if they want to. And a lot of people aren't technical and don't have a technical background. And so Beaver Builder is a theme builder and a theme that gives you that drag and drop page building. A lot of people, the reason that they use Wix and Squarespace and GoDaddy page builder is because they want drag and drop. They don't want to have to code. And they don't understand that WordPress has tools now where it makes it very easy to get the layout and the design that you want without having to become a developer. And so that's why I love Beaver Builder is because they uh, yeah, it depends which level you get, but it, I think it's like, it's somewhere between like 99 for, um, for the plugin and maybe a little more for the theme. But if you think about it, you're actually getting a dedicated team of developers who work full time on making this tool awesome. Like if you were to pay for that, if you were to actually pay for their time, like it would be astronom astronomical, most people couldn't afford it. Is there any like other things you recommend, or is that just like, that was the? Uh, uh, other people say, oh, you should just get a free one. Get a free one. Don't, don't yeah, free well, one. you get what you pay for. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you get a free one. Yeah. So there's actually Beaver Builder Lite, so you can yeah. try it without having to buy it. And I actually do have a post about themes. And my position on themes is that you should be more concerned with the theme framework that you're using than like trying to buy some pretty picture and then shove your <laughs> business and your content into it. Um, you're gonna wanna change. I've literally redone my website every year for the, for the whole time I've been in business. So um, Beaver Builder makes that easy. So, and there's a couple others that I like, that I trust, Thrive Themes. Um, I think Elementor is probably great. I haven't used that one because I don't need to learn another thing. <laughs> I just wanted to share um, that a lot of people don't realize that if you have Adobe Creative Suite, you actually have Adobe Sign in that suite. Oh, so yeah. If you're paying for point. that, there's a signature. I just yeah. want people paying extra if they have that. Oh, yeah. If you're, so if you're already paying for Adobe Suite, they have like the Adobe Signature tool is part of that. Yes. Okay, what do you recommend for a digital calendar? I'm still a Franklin Planner guy for the last 30 years. Well, you got Franklin Planner. I salute you. Yeah. Um, I just use Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. If you're in Gmail. Yeah. Great. Yeah. If, if
if you're using an email client that's something else, you might want to think of something that integrates with your client. Yeah, I mean, you can use Gmail with other clients. You can use it with, um, I use Airmail or there's other things. But uh, for me, like the, the G Suite basically, which includes the, your email and your calendar, you, know, you can get a branded email address. So I just kind of have bought into that whole, yeah. whole thing. So. Five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. May I read it? I'm just wondering. You have to give us a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, if you were one of us mm -hmm. and we had walked up four hours on mm -hmm. our calendar, what was the one thing that you think would be the most important one that we should spend on four hours? <coughs> What's the most important thing if you have four hours and you're a little overwhelmed by all this? <laughs> it's really going to depend on. So I would say. Do the time tracking thing before you do your four hours. So, because you have to see like where is your time going, right? And then it's like, oh, I spend a lot of time doing, you know, blogging and social media, and I'm constantly looking for all these images. Okay, or go organize your files. Um, so it really depends, but do the time tracking thing first. Yeah. You're just scratching your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I will be around tomorrow. Um, if you guys think of questions and you want to chat or you just want to chat in general, we'd love to do it. Thank you so much for coming.